there's four different standards. One, a two, a three, and a four. So, and then a one over and then a five over. Take the liners that are in there, and they actually fit really loose in the bore, which is not usually a good idea. Find out what kind of, what the part number is on the liner, then I can tell you what size of bore is in it. Or I, can, I brought my bore gauge along. This, having a hole straight makes the pistons and shit last longer. And then if you get one that somebody's had and seized it up, then the bore will distort because the well, this one wasn't seized up. Yeah. I mean, it was it was running. See, that's that's one of them deals when you take it apart. You identify what you got to work with with the pistons and how bad they're screwed. <laughs> Once you figure that out, then you can kind of go and then if, when you're taking the liners out, if they come out nice and easy, that means the block's pretty straight because the liner's pretty straight. And when you got to beat them out with a big hammer, you're gonna, you're gonna have trouble. Well, it's that boat I did in LA, I hadn't seen one that far out. There was two holes that were 12 thousandths out around on a four inch hole. <laughs> so the piston's going doo -doo, like that. Oh. Doo -doo -doo, yeah. doo -doo -doo. <laughs> and it couldn't make the corners fast enough so it stopped turning again. They overhauled it prick three times. Never checked the bore size on it. Never figured out why it was fucked up. And it's like, and they just kept fucking with the block. and. I went down there and bore gauged the prick, and I go, well, we're going to have to bore this because somebody told me it was one thing, and I find out it's something else. I figured we'd get to bore at 10, 20. Oh! <laughs> and then when we got it done, it was like, well, there are a, there a pair of sisters, a pair of engines in the boat, one's the right, one's the left. Well... Now you got one that's 20 over. Damn. The other one's standard. Damn. And then the, the one that sees. Doesn't that make them run weird? Well, well, it, it ran weird to begin with. And that's the problem we had is that somebody didn't bother to check timing and shit on that engine when it was new. And I know if they would have dealt with it when it was new. It had been handled, never been a problem. But what they did is uh, ignored that one. The one port engine was timed about, it was advanced timed already, and then it was about a half a tooth more than that. Mm. So you couldn't, if you timed it the way the book told you to time it, it was too fast. And that motor would pull harder than the other one. And then, like, on the top the, where the spray pattern is on the piston, it squirt across the top of the piston and then it hang the pistons up in it. And then once it started seizing up, it was a train wreck because it was it didn't have little injectors in it. It was big horsepower. I mean, the lowest horsepower it was is 900 and then it went to uh, 1200. And that's just, that's two of these together yeah. would make 1200 horse. It's better to have every piston, uh, all of the uh, cylinder walls, all the same, right? Well, it's that, the thing about that, you find a good block. So you don't want something bigger than another? Well, if, if you're salvaging stuff, it isn't a problem. But when you're, when you're really looking for something that runs good, you want to make sure all that iron's straight. Yeah. <laughs> no seized up junk in it. Huh. Uh oh, sack of shims. Another sack of shims. Sad. And then there's a gasket right there that's pretty much ruined. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome blossom. Oh boy. Well, whatever. Pardon, pardon. That's a, a box full of shit. Actually, 
actually that's uh yeah. it's kind of impressed that we got like almost 90 pounds of oil pressure out of it. 70 anyway. No, we got 90. Did we? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, so that's from knowing which pieces to shim. A lot of guys go for that. See the regulators, this piece over here. This this one sets the oil pressure to the bearings. But uh, this big guy down here, if you set that too high, it blows this one open. Uh -huh. You just screwed yourself. Well, at least you did that right. Probably didn't do anything. It's probably just from the well, wheel. I was a little worried about the spring. We'll take that apart. See if the springs up. See how close. Well, we got all the cam followers pointed the right way, and that's kind of cool. <laughs> so, any particular flavor you want here? Number one looks like the victim going first. <laughs> oh, okay. I discovered how we're going to do this. Okay. Like the Discovery I'm Channel. I'm going to subject my rag to the flood of Exxon Valdez lubricant. Now, I have to have. I don't know what they did to the rod, but I can't get the cap off. So they actually overhauled the rods. I don't know if they checked them for length or not. That that's just a straight dirt, them scratches. Well we put those in there. I know. But the kid that was in charge of cleanliness. That'd have been Leon. Really? Yeah. You gotta see that. What's this one? I'm working on one now that. What did I do? Oh. <laughs> number two rod in w number one hole. <laughs> What's that? What? Really? Yeah. If you can't add, you can't count, it's okay. Can't get that out of there? Not the way you want me to get it out. Nature. <laughs> Nature. Hey, hey, See the front one? Uh -oh. So what'd you say it was scratched? Push that down, would you please? We have to put pretty hard, dude. I guess. <laughs> there. <laughs> you know. Is this like whack-a-mole? Actually, if I got off my dead ass and got my wrench in. So what's scratched? He said whoever's in charge of those, uh, they had dirt inside of them. Jesus. That, that's not that bad, is it? And that would have been Leon. Okay. Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Where's your frog? Huh? Where's your full frog? We're finding out that pretty much everything was screwed up. A little bit? A little bit on everything? Yeah. A little bit here, a little bit there. It's yeah, all no. a mess. Yeah. But salvageable, salvageable. So that little tool that you had, you put in there. Yeah. What about it? And that pushes up the. Uh, yeah. So the way they were doing it, see that little tool right in there? I do. Oh. Put it on top of the piston. It shoves the liner on when you show the piston out. It's all special. See that? Look how easy that is. Now, more special tools. Rusty. Number one. Oh, that one comes out by hand. Most guys will get them so loose that they fall out of the hole. They, don't, they should not be that loose. So is this too loose? Oh, yeah. Because the hole's so big, the liner's got to grow. And then when it, um, if it's out of round, the liner grows into that out of round hole, then the rings don't work. <laughs> then it takes about a year for the rings to seat in. By that time they're junk. 
He's gonna make sure they're all straight up and down. Oh, Baron fell out. Oh my god. Did it break? I'm gonna guess there was some confusion about which a little that little bite. <laughs> Are they okay though? I'm gonna bet these aren't even your rods. What? You heard me. Someone sold us the wrong rod. That little that, no. That see all those scratches in that? That's a dirt in it when it got put together. That says lower. <laughs> Hang on. Lower on the okay. crank. You're fine. That says lower on that. That's the upper. They put the bearings in backwards. That's what I was saying. That says lower right there. Oh, you had them on backwards? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Well, see, when you do that, that shuts the oil off to the pistons. So they won't cool. So if you would have got this running... And put it in the bus the first time you pull the throttle down on her, she just sees solid. Oh, gee. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, you know, when you pray to God and you ask God for help, God. and it says in the Bible that if you believe in Jesus and whatever you ask, Shall he'll give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying uh, Joe's a godsend? I am, and this engine being taken apart. Well, see, it'll prove to you the bearings can go in backwards, and the old bastard will still run. They don't care. Well, there was a reason this had to be taken apart. <laughs> well, and there was a reason that Mike and I were saying, we ain't doing it. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's too easy to... Because when you handed me that bearing, I'm looking at that, and I'm like... That's wrong, and then when I see it, it said lower on the back side, it's like... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm even smart enough to know that that was wrong on the, the upper part. When it fell out, it was on the upper. Who put that in there? Leon! Leon did? Or Jason did? Leon! Scratchy shit isn't the problem, is it? So retainers aren't too bad. The rings with colors. See this bullshit here. This is ancient. Um, they made this. Well, are we gonna have to buy new pistons? Well, to do this, to make it a hundred percent good, you really should. <laughs> say gonna, you, say your thought. I gotta think about this a minute. You really should have put crosshead pistons in it, like the ones I got over here. So we're really just doing a, just brand yeah, new start here. Yeah, where the where the where the rod bolts onto it. What they used to call that piston, they had a turbo piston that's like this, and then they had a natural piston. And this was the first generation of pistons. See the wide rings? That's what they had in the it's old days. They're hard. But just shiny. It got tight a little bit because it was didn't have any cooling on the piston, and it got a little warm. I wound it up a couple times, but. Those pistons should work with what we're trying to do, but they're not made for the kind of horsepower that uh, where you run it every day as hard as it'll go kind of deal. That that stuff. Well, that's what I'm gonna do is drag. Are you? Yeah. Okay. I have to go get some rods then. Well, running around with you, I think I have to. Because <laughs> um, Joel will get driving it and he'll be. <laughs> no, it'll. That's how you drive it. You run it hard. That is how you drive it. That's what Dad said to us. He kept 
saying, Steve? You're lugging it. Yeah, you're going to ruin this. Actually, okay, here's the difference. This motor, you can do pretty much what you want to it as long as you water, oil, don't plug the muffler up tight, and make sure there's an air cleaner on it that'll work. And it'll do fine because it's got iron pistons in it. Where you do that with a Cummins, they'll hang them up every time. <laughs> they will kill themselves. And that's why they got aluminum they'll pistons. Screw those Cummins. Well, see, everybody went to this style of piston. Everybody, Cat, Cummins, Detroit, all of them. Everybody followed Detroit because their junk works. What do you think it would get a set of pistons for? Well, if you're going to do that, you're going to buy cylinder kits. And? and probably <laughs> two grand. We're not made of money, Mike. But, uh, that's the problem. Nobody said we was. Uh, I put a. This is going to be a forty thousand dollar rebuild. I put a. Uh, don't tell anybody because they'll, they'll be afraid to work on theirs. Well, congratulations. What do you got? A lever. I put a. Uh, hey, I got an idea. You could put a leper colony on the end of your bus. <laughs> That'd be pretty. Let's just take our pictures, all of us, and make us uh, have leprosy. And I yeah. have our hands falling off. <laughs> you know they used to call stuff like that when they had bad problems. They just called it leper colony. Anyway, anywho, I would assume you know what I assume. Yeah, the hang out between. I'm gonna tell you, I put a. Uh, Water. Ooh, right at four inch. Oh. What, Mike? I put a, uh, what do you call it? Gasket? No. I put a pipe on, or a hose on this. Yeah. And it was hitting here and hitting over here, too. So it had been hitting over here. So we're going to take a torch and cut those out. Well, you want me to go finish what I was doing in there? Since this is a this train wreck. <laughs> it is. It's a train wreck. Well, I can make it run good with liners. No, we don't. Let's see what we got with liners. What we get that? What came down the big rock candy highway? What you want the the bullshit the lower is There's no numbers on the browser. numbers. Where'd they get this stuff from? China? Well, you needed the lower port. Well, I was... Okay, when they put a part number on here, that also designates size. <laughs> well, maybe it's on one of the other ones. Uh, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say these came out of somebody's... Oh, right here on the very bottom. <clears throat> oh shit. That says five thousandths. I wonder if it's got five thousandths liners in it. God almighty. If that's true, we're all gonna be pissed off. Why is that? <laughs> because you ever try and get five thousandths liners? No. You and God will have a long conversation. no call for fives but uh, you got four sizes of standard and then you got one over and then you got five over nobody does five over I found one out in the field in my time and it was a bastard and you had we had to order parts from the moon to get it what is five over that's big five thousand is bigger than stock on the OD and that's what it says well I think that's what it says so I'm going to measure this and find
find out what they did. But you're gonna measure it yourself. See when it's stamped clear on the bottom, out of the if it's uh, the standard sizes, number one is here, two's there, three's there, and four's down there. And this is marked five on the bottom, which means it's a bastard. It's got to be. And uh, if that's five over, uh, this isn't going to be good because I I don't know if I can get these liners in five over. Get my caliper and we'll measure it. That's smart. You, want, you want to try that? That'll be an exciting deal. So this is four inch and something. Now this is not the most politically correct measurement in the world. Four. That's the one you had? Yeah, this is 4625. Where'd my other liner go to? Well, the other trick way to do it is just drop that liner in the hole. That's five over, Dad. <laughs> what? It's five over. So these liners. That's five over. Is this liner at number three, standard? And you can you can run them with. You can run them. 
with a dispensation from God with like 2,000 feeler gauge behind them because they're too too loose. And they will run that way as long as you don't abuse them or pull them hard. Well, when we're climbing the Mount Kilimanjaro in, in uh, Egypt. China. Kilimanjaro in Africa. Uh, what about the grape? No, not just what about off. the grapevine? Yeah, the grapevine. How long is the grapevine? That's a long ways, isn't it? Yeah, that's a train wreck. Well, then we can't go anywhere. <laughs> well, it's like, where's your uh, plate, Mike? We can put fives back in it. Now you got to see. Now you got to deal with fives. <laughs> Enjoy, boys. While we're looking at stuff that's thoroughly screwed. Now, you would assume somebody that worked on Detroit would have put the bearings in in the correct in the right direction position. What are you seeing? Did you guys actually buy a new crank? Yeah. Uh, no, you didn't. If you look in that hole, you see all kinds of numbers stamped on there, and none of them are Detroit numbers. That's some rebuilder horse shit. Oh, while I'm looking at stuff, that's not anything Detroit did. Oh, it says Studebaker. That doesn't mean it's right, though. I wonder. So I wonder if your crank was like ten under, twenty under, and I get, he got you a slightly used standard. I guess we were just falling into his trap. Well, you you expect what you pay for, you know. You probably paid good money for this. Well, yeah, I got about twenty thousand dollars into it from what we did there. So that's the uh, okay. Well, he made us uh, feel good for what he was saying. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna set this aside. see the typical deal where we had the ah, number four Look, big old little wrong hole asshole <laughs> there aha uh -huh, fits in that time anyway uh now I gotta crawl around and get that prick loose. But um, the rods and the crank look like something to come out of a machine shop. And uh, I, you got a the crank that was in it. I'm gonna. Well, it may have had cracks in it, and that may be why they traded it off. I think we have it. But uh, I think we got that old crank. Anyway, let's move. So are you saying this is a piece of shit crank? Well, you told me new. Well, I thought it was that new. That ain't new. <laughs> it's used and it's standard, but it ain't new. And well, okay, pardon me, it's new to you. Well, they told me new. Leon told me new. And new means new. <laughs> to me. He wrong. <laughs> well, he's wrong about his it's life. Like, no, it's like when you get one of these rebuilt, and they tell you it's all new. It's like the only thing new in there is some pistons and liners and some bearings. The rest of that junk is old, <laughs> and it isn't it isn't one of those things that's going to last forever either. Well, it'll last my lifetime probably. 
so it's not like we're I gonna think, I think I took some of the paint off Steve Bopan. He is not gonna like me. No, he's just playing. I'm gonna say God we put <laughs> So that'll let crap to hold the, the hitch in there. That's all farmer bolts. There's none of there's any they aren't even grade five bolts. There's <laughs> and have no markings on the heads of them at all. So the only thing I dislike is this little corner right here. Yeah, this is the side they screwed you on. Because they welded this corner on. This is where they cut this off when it was in the bus. They cut this corner off. Yeah. They tell you to get a new crank and it ain't new. Uh, and then they put the bearings and the rod bearings upside down. This, like I said, the first time the throttle went to the floor and it pulled hard, it was seized up tight. <laughs> Again, at this, even so now, we still can. This head laid outside in the rain. It's never been surfaced. And you can run your fingers over it and feel the wrinkles in it. <laughs> Very interesting. I want, I'll bet that's got the old tubes in it. I'll bet you a dollar. Well, this hole and that hole didn't work. And that would have been, yeah, two and six. Five wasn't far behind. But so we got to find out if all the rods are the same length because it, every time you size the big end of the rods in them, it shortens the rod up a little bit. And then if you mix it with one that hasn't been done about 27 times, you'll you got one here that's pretty long and the other one's pretty short. <laughs> that's that's why when you got a motor that runs okay, you save all the pieces out of it because you know what you have. You can't just arbitrarily go, well, we'll just get some more parts. It's like, that is a very bad idea. Because you, because there's so many guys think they can work on this crap. They just throw whatever they, you know, throw anything into the prick. And, oh, shit, it runs when we're done. <laughs> and it doesn't mean it runs very long, but it runs. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Well, this was definitely a project. With this head, if you if you if you to put um, in series pistons in it like it was before, you're only allowed six thousandths protrusion on the valves before they hit the pistons. <laughs> these that looks like it's in there. These crooked. these stick out of the head. Those are would have been close to hitting the pistons. You can see where this. You got yeah. You can. This side is this side's in further than that side. See that? Tiny bit. Well, I can I can see tiny things. <laughs> well, I guess that's the virtue of being around small girls, right? <laughs> yeah, tiny girl. Okay. See, that's all rust. <laughs> And they sanded it off. Like with my sanding board. It was rusted on that head and they just sanded all that shit off and put it all together. So we should have that machine, right? We gotta look at the rest of it. it so huh. there's my rod I want right there. There's my rod right there. <laughs> so, you want to buck this corner off of this thing and take that bullshit out from underneath here? Do what? Cut the corner of that little 
cross brace off. Take oh that yeah, yeah, we can do that. Shit out of there. Yeah, we can do that. Because I think that's going to be the answer for this. But the problem is, okay. Here's where I got a problem, and I don't know if we can find five overliners. That's one way to get past where we're we're hung up at. Well, you can get on. You can get on the horn and call people you know. Cause I don't know anybody. See, the only like all these guys that sell parts, they only sell parts that they move. Five over liners are not something they move. Detroit Diesel will have that shit because they did that for a long time. But when you've got when you're trying to sell, you know, four or five five over liners, they go. You gotta buy tens because we ain't gonna deal with that shit. And if we buy them from the dealer, they're gonna be like two hundred bucks a piece. Jesus. If we can get them, be like those pins I bought that are <laughs> twenty six bucks a piece. Yeah, the trick is finding five overliners for this thing because they're kind of oddball. And the ones I want for it are oddball, oddball. So we'll, uh, the, the correct way to fix it is take it and get it bored 10 over. Actually, it's probably close enough you could probably hone it to get to 10 over instead of boring it. But, um, that's what it needs to be done because then if you ever have to field repair the thing you're going to be hung up for parts forever on it because you go standard you go 10 you go 20 you go 30 and so you're suggesting to hone it well board or hone it either way and get it out to 10 then it's a standard part that you can buy any place but again so i did and see this this is where you guys play the big part in this is you your um, uh, amount of life you expect to get out of it. Uh, how many times you're going to overhaul it alongside the road? <laughs> Stuff like that. Hopefully none. Well, um, I don't know. We can put fives back in it, but it's too big for fives right now almost because they honed it out bigger than big and I I could understand Greyhound doing that because like I do stand there with a hone and poke them all out to five over and put it back together but I'll, somebody was just making some money off of somebody when they did that because the, the, the legitimate repair is to go ten over and then you can buy parts for it Yeah. because the, the only one I run across was in the woods and a yarder and it was five over, pulled the liner out, and it's like, and the one I had wouldn't go in the hole. I had a 10, and you're screwed. I had to order the part from somewhere that took well, I would say three or four days. Hone it out. I can't. Uh... But you're gonna, you really need to take it to a machine shop to do that. Because they got a machine that'll just poke that out in a little bit. But see, it, it, it's just. The <laughs> well, getting it down there. And well, that you can handle that, but the the problem is, is uh, you just this is one of them deals you end up chasing your tail a lot. And I don't know what the difference is going to be when you go to put, uh, if you tried to put crosshead pistons in it, put good stuff in it. Because I have to go do homework to figure that one out. Because, uh, like on this, the v, V8s, they had to add extra counterweights to the camshaft gears to make them balance because they would be out of balance. So 
So we're really just kind of screwed. Well, it's a... Uh, it's, it's one of those motors that got put together that shouldn't have been done this way. Well, Dad warned us. <laughs> well, it's... See, when people do crap like this, you need to be advised about what the hell's going on because, I mean, that's your call about where you're spending your money. The the deal where you get a big surprise of, oh yeah, the 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 blocks <laughs> five over, and our new crankshaft is not new; it's a slightly used unit, and we didn't change the vibration dampeners. Those need to be changed when you do this kind of stuff because you don't know how many hours is on them. And then that right there will break the crank. <laughs> Jesus. And it's a piece that goes on the outside. And if you choose to not change them like this thing got, they didn't change them. They just put them back on them. That's why when people wonder why it costs so much to overhaul one there's a reason <laughs> when you put it back so it'll survive and you put good stuff in it it costs quite a bit of money but see uh, this this should have never unfolded like this the if your crank was undersized it, sh it could have went right back in because it doesn't make any difference that part of it the rods that part I would have changed because those probably last half as long as the crosshead stuff. Hmm. I don't think we got that crank out there. It's in the that little shed. Is it? And that was something that Leon wanted to do, was change that crank, and I don't know. Probably just because he wanted to make some money out of it. You, never, you don't know what his motive was. I do. He was a, he's, a, he's not a straight-up guy. He never has been in his life. That's, that's what his deal is. Yeah. And you know what? He's going to face God over that. I think uh, people being the way Leon is, or was... Yeah. He wasn't quite honest. Wasn't quite. <laughs> well, we've actually found some bearings in that were the right, right way around. Did what? We found some rod bearings in that were incorrect. Rod bearings that, that were, were incorrect. Were in, incorrectly, in, installed correctly, pardon me. Well, they were installed correctly. Yeah, amazing. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's some good news. <laughs> well, well, it didn't run long enough happen? to hurt it. <laughs> how does that happen? He's saying we need to uh, get this uh, engine in a machine shop and hone it out to 10 over. And uh, I can find, see if we can find fives, but uh, let me get the rest of these out. We'll have a talk about parts pieces, and I'll explain you why some of this stuff doesn't going to work. Because it's uh, uh, that it's I'll sh I'll show you the pistons and stuff why they don't work later. There you go. These oil holes on the first set of oil rings. When you when it's turbocharged, the uh, airbox pressure because you can you can see how how close the liner is to the ring land. So when you got like 30 pounds of boost in here, some of it leaks over into that ring groove. And when you get to, uh, I'll knock one of them pistons out over there and show you the difference. They, they didn't drill these holes in turboed pistons after a certain year because the amount of crankcase pressure that's involved in that makes it not a good deal. And then the other one, see that orifice in the rod there? in that oil hole. Okay, that cuts the oil down going to the piston. So they did that on naturally aspirated motors 
and by rights on a turboed one this that should be out of there so there's a, there's a bunch of stuff that's different when you like on the let me see take a second here I gotta I'll knock one of these pistons out and see if we can get Go turbo. Think. These have been uh, abused. It's hard to see the gaps on the rings when they're this old. <laughs> Can't even see it. And yeah, right there. We gotta get a pick to pick that out of there. But they change the way the oil holes go. And the bottom of the piston changes. And that's about oil consumption and uh, too much crankcase pressure in them. The bottom, that j they call it a J relief. And they move the holes on the bottom so that to keep it from having too much crankcase pressure. I, th I thought they closed one. They changed the top ones too. There, there's subtle differences in these because they, when the, by the time the 92s got online and they, it took them a few years to figure this out. Because this, this setup here um, is, doesn't cause any problems. You don't have blow-by issues, you don't have oil consumption issues, stuff like that. 